Do you love your Bowhead Reach adaptive mountain bike? But do you have useless noodle legs that you have to get up and over the handlebars? Well today, we're going to show you how to build your own quick disconnect steering column for the Bowhead Reach. First, you're going to need a clean work area. You'll need a punch, a wrench, a ratchet, one teaspoon calipers, one tablespoon calipers, 1940s bridge port or newer, a 36 inch bed engine lathe, and a TIG welder. I'll go ahead and pause the video here so that you can gather these items. Alright, now let's get started. So if you undo a bunch of screws and kind of push the footrest part back, you can drop the old steering column out the bottom of the bike. And it's this kind of heavy duty solid aluminum bar, which is kind of surprising. But uh, we're going to be going ahead and replacing all of this except for the little steering fork at the bottom. So first we got to punch out the steering fork and that doesn't work so well so we make a mess of it and then we go ahead and we just put it on the lathe so that there's really no going back and we start boring out the center. And then when we punch it, that'll come out. Go ahead and set that to the side, we'll need it at the end. So we're going to be using this race car quick connect steering fitting here. It normally allow you to take the steering wheel on and off of a race car, but we're going to essentially insert this into the center of a new steering column. Uh, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and replicate the base fitting of the steering column where the fork attaches. And it's important to always start with a fully dimensioned engineering drawing. We'll go ahead and make this out of some alloy steel on the lathe right in the center of our tolerance bands. We'll use this angry tool to put some flats on it. And then we'll go ahead and core it out for light. Then it gets TIG welded into the end of the tube. And then put back on the lathe to take the weld bead down so that it's nice and flush. A hole is drilled for an extra safety screw that goes in to hold the forks. Hey, a perfect hollow steel copy. Now to make the gear spline fit in the top of the tube, we're going to have to go ahead and use the metal 3D printer to increase the diameter slightly for that nice fit into the tube. This tube goes on the lathe to turn it down to the right diameter. Cut the tube to size. Weld it all together. Now, the upper piece fits onto the spline, but we need to create a flange piece to help mount the upper steering column. This tool will be made out of alloy steel in the way. Here I am turning down a couple different diameters. Go ahead and part it out using a parting blade. Flip it around, face the back side. Drill it out with a small drill bit, and drill it out with the big drill bit. That looks good, but it needs some mounting holes for screws. Fortunately, we have the internet duct taped to this giant piece of iron ore, and we can find the center using Mr. Wiggle. There we go, now it's found the center. Ish. And the internet can also help us drill a three hole pattern. Screw holes check out, so it's time to go ahead and weld the flange onto the tube. I never took a photo, but I did go ahead and turn down this weld bead too. Using pretty much all the same ideas as the other parts you've seen, I did also make this upper cap part so that the handlebar cap can screw into something. Here it is all assembled. And I didn't show, but I put some paint on it, uh, test fit it, and put it all back together. Now to use it, I can pop the steering column off, set the handlebars aside, and easily get my spaghetti legs over it. I'm also doing this on my custom lift that helps hold the bike up higher so it's easier for me to get in and out. That's another video I'll post later. That's it for this modification, but there are more coming. Thanks for watching.